The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session with Madam Ali Elizabeth, your physics teacher for Form 4. We begin this session by looking at the assignments we had in Lesson 2. And the assignment says, apart from those already listed, what could be some of the negative effects of heat on our environment? Apart from the negative effects of heat that we listed in Lesson 2, what could be some of the negative effects of heat to our environment? I'll give you some few seconds to think about that, then we look at the proposed answers. Heat can make the environment dusty. Reasons being that heat energy dries up the environment and the moisture of the environment or the moisture on the environment is dried up by the heat and the environment gets dusty. Too much rain can cause landslides. Now we know what the, the effects of global warming. We saw global warming and its effect. When global warming causes too much rain to fall in a place, it can cause landslides. It can cause even floods. It causes a lot of negative effects on the environment. So the two that are highlighted here, you can think of more. And that heat can make the environment dusty and heat can cause too much rain to fall which can lead to landslides in some areas now we get into lesson three and the caption of lesson three is thermometers and thermometric properties we want to look at thermometers and thermometric properties now I have planned this lesson in such a way that I will give you the objective of the lesson, the prerequisites of the lesson, then we will look at a real life situation which will lead us into the lesson activity. Thereafter we will have some exercises and some assignments. For the objective of this lesson, I expect that by the end of the lesson you should be able to list different types of thermometers. Name the various thermometric substances and state their thermometric properties. And you should also be able to explain why the particular properties are used in the thermometers. Now for you to understand this lesson properly, you are expected to already be able to define what a physical property is and have some and have some knowledge of some thermometers that you have been using or that you have seen being used. You should also have some knowledge of temperature and how it is measured. Therefore, you are expected to be able also by now to state that temperature is measured using thermometers because we use thermometers to measure temperature. Now to test this prerequisite knowledge, I have the following questions for you. What is a physical property? Question two, name any type of thermometer you have seen. And question three, what was the thermometer named above used for? You saw it, what was it used for? I'll give us some time, then we'll get to the answers. The 
The first question says, what is a physical property? And in form three, we learned that a physical property is any property of a material that can be quantified, which means it can be measured using numbers. And so temperature also is a physical property. The next question, name what type of thermometers you have seen or what type of thermometer you have seen. Any type that you have seen, you name it. I brought the clinical thermometer and the thermoflash thermometer. A clinical thermometer, a thermoflash thermometer. These are the thermometers I have seen. I know you have seen some. You can name the ones you have seen. And the last question is asking us what these clinical thermometers or what these thermometers are used for. These thermometers are used to measure human body temperatures. The clinical thermometer is used in the hospital to measure human body temperature. The thermoflash is also used to measure human body temperature. Now with the prevalence of COVID-19, most of us have seen thermoflashes. You go to a place you want to enter a store or somewhere, there is a thermoflash that is used, a thermometer called a thermoflash that is used at a distance to take your temperature. It does not necessarily come in contact with your body. That is a thermoflash. So these two thermometers are the ones I have listed here. You can also list the many you have seen and tell us what they were used for. Now we look at this real life situation. Two from four students went to consult at the hospital because they both had headache. After taking their vital signs, it was established by the nurse that one of them had fever and the other one just needed rest. Questions. How did the nurse know? How did the nurse know the one that had a fever? What instrument do you think she used? And I think as we go through the end of the lesson, or as we go through this lesson, we will be able to answer this real life situation question. So as we are going through the lesson, you will follow up with these questions in your mind so that at the end we will see how the nurse was able to identify the one that had a fever and the instrument she used. Now in this lesson, thermometers and their thermometric properties, we will be looking at the definition of a thermometer, a thermometric substance, thermometric properties, and types of thermometers. So we start with the definition of a thermometer. What is a thermometer? A thermometer simply is an instrument that is used to measure temperature. Generally, temperature of anything, temperature of any place, we use them, uh, thermometers to measure temperatures. Now, the average human body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So when you are normal, you are not sick, you are fine. Your average and normal body temperature should be about 37 degrees Celsius. When your temperature starts going above 37 degrees Celsius, then it is indicating that there is something wrong with you. So when, if you are at home and you always want to take your body temperature, or you feel sick, most of the time you see parents take uh, thermometers and they want to find out your temperature. Because when the temperature goes above a certain level, which is 37 degrees Celsius, it means that there is something not going on well with you. And theoretically, the average room temperature is in a certain range, a range of 20 degrees to 27 degrees Celsius. Now, why do we say theoretically? Because it is not everywhere that the average room temperature is the same. If you look at the range, the range is quite big, from 20 degrees to 27 degrees Celsius. That is the average room temperature that we find, especially in textbooks. But if we want to consider our environment, the room temperatures vary. When we talk about room temperature, we are talking about the normal temperature in the environment at the time. And in, especially in Cameroon, you will bear with me that the temperatures are not always the same. Somebody who lives in Boya, for instance, Boya is a cold town. Somebody who lives in Boya will realize that the room temperature is lower than the room temperature in Douala. 
It's lower than the room temperature in Garwa. It's lower than the room temperature in Limbe. It's lower than the room temperature even in Yaoundé. So you cannot give, we always talk about average because the room temperatures are not the same in different environments. Talk less even of different countries. In Africa, we don't suffer from winter and during winter periods, especially in the Western world, the room temperatures go far below 20 degrees Celsius. So we just give an average from all over the world, they take an average range. So I want you to note here that room temperature is not a standard temperature that you can mention anywhere in the world because each environment, each region has their own room temperature. But we want to look at an average. And the average that has been established here is between 20 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius. Now we look at thermometric properties or thermometric substances. What is a thermometric substance? A thermometric substance is a substance that has a physical property which varies linearly with temperature. What does that mean? It means that there is a certain physical property in that substance that changes as temperature changes. And the change is linear. The change is linear means that it changes by equal intervals, as the temperature also changes by equal intervals. That's the meaning of linear change in temperature. So a thermometric substance is a substance that has those kind of properties. Example of thermometric substances, we have mercury, we have alcohol, all gases are thermometric substances, platinum, and radiant energy. These are some examples of thermometric substances that we will be seeing. And because we have said that thermometric substances are substances that have some physical properties that vary linearly with temperature, we want to look at some of these physical properties that vary linearly with temperature. So we are looking at thermometric properties. These physical properties are called thermometric properties. And a thermometric property is any physical property that changes measurably and linearly with temperature. Now, I have two words here, measurably and linearly. So a thermometric property must change linearly and measurably. Now the insistence there is that you use these two words because it should change in such a way that you can measure it. And it should also change at, by equal intervals as the temperature is changing by equal intervals. So the change should be linear, the change should be measurable. You should be able to measure the change and the change is linear, that is the meaning. So a thermometric property is a physical property that changes measurably and linearly with temperature. Examples of thermometric properties. We have the change in radiant intensity we will see thermometers that use these thermometric properties very soon. We have the change in electronic signals. And we have the change in the volume of liquid, the change in the length of a solid. We have the change in the thermoelectric voltage. We have the change in electrical resistance of conductors. And we have change of a pressure of Const or change of a gas at constant volume. Now, all these properties, if you look at it, there is a word that is constantly appearing, change, because that property must be able to change before we can dictate that temperature has changed. You cannot just say it is the, that the property is the radiation intensity. What about the radiation intensity? The radiation intensity must be changing as the temperature is changing. So we look at types of thermometers, and under this type of thermo types of thermometers, we'll be looking at a type of thermometer and the thermometric substance or thermometric property that the thermometer uses. And so we'll start with the first type of thermometer, which is the infrared ear thermometer. So the infrared ear thermometer can see the pictures. This is a thermometer 
we call it the ear thermometer because this portion is put into the ear and then you read the digital dashboard from behind. So this is the front part, the part that is put into the ear and this is the back part of the thermometer. So this thermometer captures body heat in the form of infrared energy. It picks up heat energy which is given up by the body. And the property that this thermometer uses is the change in radiation intensity of the body. So we are talking about the change in the infrared radiation of the body, the change in the heat radiation of the body. The thermometer picks it and then interprets it on the screen and you can read the temperature. The second thermometer, we have the digital thermometers. Here I have two types of digital thermometers. I have the laboratory digital thermometer. This one is the laboratory digital thermometer and this one is a clinical digital thermometer. Now, this thermometer measures temperature by means of an electronic circuit. That's why they are called digital thermometers because they measure uh, temperature by means of an electronic circuit. The property that is used in this thermometer is the electronic signals. So the electronic circuit pick up heat energy and the heat energy enables the circuit to send some signals and the signals are read as the temperature on the digital screen. Then we have the liquid crystal thermometer. The liquid crystal thermometer is also called the plastic stripped thermometer and it contains heat sensitive liquid crystals in a plastic strip. If you look at this is a plastic strip here this black plastic strip, it contains heat sensitive crystals in it that changes color to indicate different temperatures. So as the temperature is changing, the color of the strips are changing. If you look, you see that there are different colors of strips here. So this thermometer picks up the heat energy and the heat energy enables the, strip, the strips to change their color as the temperature is changing. It changes color in a certain pattern as the temperature is increasing or as the temperature is decreasing. And the property used here is color change. The property used in the liquid crystal thermometer is the color change. Then we have the pyrometer thermometer. This is the picture of a pyrometer thermometer. And this thermometer measures the temperature of the heat radiation emitted by objects. When heat is emitted by an object, even from a distance, you can measure the temperature of that object because the heat is radiated and it moves towards the thermometer. The thermometer picks up the heat energy. This thermometer does not need to touch the object. That is why I said it can be measured from a distance. The temperature can be measured from a distance without you necessarily going closer to the object. That is why this thermometer is even good to use in ovens. Baking ovens, for instance, in bakeries, you don't need to enter the oven because it is quite hot, but you can check the temperature of the oven using a pyrometer, a pyrometer thermometer from a distance. It measures very high temperatures. That is why it is even good for ovens, because the temperatures inside the ovens can be very high. This thermometer uses the property of change in radiation intensity just like the first thermometer we saw this one also uses change in radiation thermometer uh, intensity as the thermometric property and the fifth the thermometer we are looking at is the thermocouple the thermocouple thermometer measures temperatures very quickly so it is a quick response thermometer it measures the temperature through electrical resistance that generates a voltage. So when you look at this, you see it has some cables at the ends here. So it measures the temperature through resistance that generates a voltage and measures very high temperatures as, as well. So it is good for environments where the temperatures are very high and some thermometers that we commonly have around cannot measure. The thermometric property used here is the change in the thermoelectric voltage because remember we have said here that the thermometer measures it when the electrical resistance generates a voltage. So as the voltage is changing, it is changing along 
with the temperature. The platinum resistant thermometers. The platinum resistant thermometer measures temperature through a platinum wire. This platinum wire is attached to an electrical resistance. Now, if you look at this, is the platinum resistant thermometer, and the wire is attached to the resistance, and the re and the resistance is read on the digital dashboard here. So, the platinum resistance thermometer is a very accurate thermometer, but unfortunately, it is very slow. So it is slow to respond to temperature, but when it has responded to temperature, it can measure very accurate values. It measures high temperatures as well, because platinum is a good metal that can resist high temperatures. The thermometric property used here is the change in resistance. That is why it is called the platinum resistance thermometer. The seventh, we have the, volume, the constant volume gas thermometer. The constant volume gas thermometer uses a bulb that is filled with a fixed amount of gas and it is attached to a manometer. As the temperature of the gas increases, the pressure also increases. So the pressure changes with change in temperature. The pressure changes will change in temperature because the gas is kept constant. So the gas cannot go beyond a confined environment. So the only thing that will change with the change in temperature will be the pressure. That is why it is called a constant volume gas thermometer. And the temperature range that this thermometer can measure is from 0 Kelvin to 500 Kelvin. It's quite a large temperature range. The thermometric property that is used in this thermometer is the change in pressure of the gas. Now, when you are listing the thermometric property, it is always good to mention the substance. Because here we are talking about the change in pressure of the gas. Because if we just say change in pressure, we don't know it could be change in pressure of the atmosphere or change in pressure of a solid on which the gas or the, the thermometer is lying. But the Change in pressure that is considered in the constant volume gas thermometer is the change in pressure of the gas that is in the bulb. Now, this is a picture of the constant volume gas, a drawing or diagram of a constant volume gas thermometer. The bulb is here with the gas in it, and there's a mercury manometer that helps to read the change in pressure. And this is a picture of the thermometer of a constant volume gas thermometer. So we have the bulb here. Then we have the constant pressure gas thermometer. This constant pressure gas thermometer is based on the thermal expansion of a gas at constant pressure. In the first case, we are looking at the pressure changing at constant volume. Here we are looking at the pre the, uh, the the temperature changing at constant pressure. In the first case, we had the temperature changing at constant volume. Now, this temperature or this thermometer is very precise and it is a thermometer that is often used to adjust other thermometers. Now, when you get a thermometer and you want to calibrate the thermometer, you want to adjust the thermometer to suit the, the conditions or standard conditions, it is a constant pressure gas thermometer that is used because it is actually very precise. It can measure very precise temperatures. The thermometric property that is used is the change in the volume of the gas. As the change in the volume of the gas, as, or as the temperature is changing, the volume of the gas is changing, but the gas is kept at constant pressure. Now we have a picture or a diagram of the constant pressure gas thermometer here on the slide. Then the next one we have is a bimetallic thermometer. A bimetallic thermometer is formed from a bimetallic strip. And a bimetallic strip actually is just two metals with different coefficients of expansion that are welded together so that the metals or the combination of the two metals bulge on cooling or uh, heating. 
Now, if you look down here, you will see these two metals that have been welded together. We have brass and we have steel. This is when they are at normal temperature, at normal room temperature, they have the same length. But remember that we have said these two metals have different thermal coefficients or expansion coefficients. They expand at different rates with increase in temperature. That is the meaning. So when you put these two together, when it, the, the temperature starts reducing, the biometallic strip will bulge. Or when the temperatures are increasing, the biometallic strip will bulge. Now the strip is, a, is straight at a reference temperature, which is the room temperature, just like what we have here now. And at high temperatures, the brass expands more and is on the outside of the curve. So when the temperatures are high or when the, the bimetallic strip is heated, then the brass will expand more. This is the brass and the steel is below. So when the brass expands more, it gets longer and the thing bulges with the brass on the outside. Now at low temperatures, brass also contracts more. And when it contracts more, it gets shorter. When it gets shorter, then it, the, the strip will bulge with the brass on the inside. So the more brass expands with increase in temperature, the more it also contracts with decrease in temperature. Now a bimetallic thermometer is a spiral, is in a spiral form like what we see here. This is a bimetallic thermometer with two of those metals welded together and wrapped in a spiral form with a pointer at one end. We have a pointer at one end there. The metal with the greater expansivity is in, on the inside. The metal with the greater expansivity is on the inside. And at one end, it is held fast here. If you look at this end, it is the bimetallic strip is held or the thermometer is fastened. So something is fixed here so that when it expands, it cannot move in this direction. It moves only in the direction or at the end where we have the pointer. So one end is held fast, so motion is only in one direction. And the direction of the motion is the direction where the pointer is. The other end is attached to a pointer or is attached to a scale with a pointer that moves. We have a pointer here. When the strip expands and it starts opening up, and it's unwrapping, the pointer goes up to read the temperature. When it cools and it is rubbing in, the pointer comes down and reduces the temperature. So that is the functioning of the bimetallic thermometer. The one that expands more is put on the inside and the one that expands less is put on the outside for the two metals. Advantages of a bimetallic thermometer. A bimetallic thermometer is simple to construct, it is easy to handle, it is easy to transport, it is very, it has a very large working range, it is durable, and it is not easily damaged. Those are the advantages. And the advantages of a bimetallic thermometer again are that they are suitable for industrial use because of the very high melting point so they can measure very high temperatures without being destroyed. Disadvantages. It is not very accurate and they cannot measure low temperatures. They can only measure high temperatures. The biometallic thermometer is very bulky and heavy to handle. So if you look at the picture here, you see that it's something that can really be bulky and heavy to handle. So these are pictures of a biometallic thermometer. The last one we want to look at is the liquid in glass thermometer. The liquid in glass thermometer is a thin glass tube with a glass bulb and a small glass capillary in which the liquid runs. The thermometric property that is used in this liquid in glass thermometer is the change in volume of the liquid. We will be seeing the liquid in glass thermometer in detail in subsequent lessons. This is a picture of a liquid in glass thermometer, but we will study it more in subsequent lessons. Recall that in this lesson, we have seen the types of, thermo of thermometers and thermometric properties. We have seen a thermometer as an instrument used to measure temperature and the average human body temperature. 
we have seen is 37 degrees Celsius and the theoretical average room temperature is between 20 and 27 degrees Celsius. We have also seen thermometric properties of substances. We have seen thermometric substances and we have seen types of thermometers. We are going to take an exercise. What type of thermometer would you recommend for a family house, for a bakery, and for a blacksmith who fabricates pot? For a family house, what type of a thermometer would you recommend? I would recommend an infrared ear thermometer for children when they get sick. I would recommend a digital thermometer, and I would recommend liquid crystal or plastic strip thermometers. I will also recommend a liquid in glass thermometer, especially the uh, clinical liquid in glass thermometer. For a bakery, I will recommend the pyrometer thermometer because it can measure high temperatures from a distance. And for the blacksmith, I will recommend the thermocouple. And with this, I will give you, leave you with this assignment. Name thermometers that use the properties of fluid as their thermometric properties. You name those thermometers. After naming, with, after giving you that assignment, we come to the end of this lesson, and I'll see you in lesson four. Lesson four is establishing a temperature scale, and precisely we'll be looking at the fixed points of a temperature scale. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubiayen, gani bana, ma tege mot, gani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa tina, bia dinkido, ma ne tambia niña ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 